Okay, hello, good afternoon. It's Sandy Hartman and Kathy Landine. We're the Buzz Killers. We do uh, community interviews of local um, officials, local board members. Today we have Quentin Cutler. He's on the Finance Committee. He's been on the Finance Committee for two years. So he's offered some time for us to go over the town budget and talk about the town finances. Thank you, Quentin. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, I think if you give us an overview of the budget process so people can see how things come about. Like you meeting with departments, like when's your most busiest time now? Like Yeah, certainly it's starting in January. Uh, January through March here we're working on the, the following fiscal year. So in this case we're working on the fiscal year 2022 budget. The process is the department heads will all submit to the town administrator their their proposed budget. Uh, the town administrator will then go through every department function and will make modifications based on, you know, Andrew's, you know, view of what the budget should be. In many cases, the department heads are, they could be asking for more resources or increase in time for some existing resources. And then, or maybe even some capital expenditures, depending on the function. Andrew will work with them and kind of get to an adjusted budget for each of these functions, including the enterprise funds, and then to start having meetings. The FinCom will have meetings with each of the department heads. We, we literally sit down with everybody and we go over line by line. Like, we don't just skip over no, major. No. If anyone has ever listened, which I invite yeah, everyone yeah. to do, to a FinCom meeting, uh, sometimes we're talking about $100 increases and changes. So we're required to, to discuss every aspect of the budget. Even when something is level set, we could ask questions like, why you're not asking for an increase here? Last year you may have asked for it. Is mm -hmm. it, you know, did you, were you able to work around it? So the FinCom is responsible for making sure that the proposed budget is in line with expectations, uh, aligned with the, tech, uh, the town administrator's perspective, and also to make sure that um, you know we're addressing things like potential additional needs in mm -hmm. other in other departments. Uh, after several meetings, uh, we will come to a total budget. Uh, we will discuss any proposed increases that are necessary, eliminate where we can, or defer where we can. Uh, and at that point, the the, fin the FinCom will vote on the budget. So. In an environment where the year-over-year -year increases are just contractual increases in salaries or wages, there's no big proposal to increase, say, headcount or a big capital spend. Mm -hmm. The budget process is relatively easy, to be honest with you. It's a process. We need to go through and do our due diligence, mm -hmm. but we are able to complete it pretty quickly. The, the bigger discussions happen with, say, the school. Mm -hmm. um, right now, our uh, budget for this year is about 31 million, and that's all in. That includes covering debt exclusions, covering um, the general fund. Yeah. Uh, but the school budget is about 18 million. It's about it's 60 percent plus, 60 more than 60 percent mm -hmm. of our overall budget. Uh, in prior years, the school budget was always a bit of a Bit of a delay, a bit of information mm -hmm. for one thing, and secondly, it was usually much higher than what they expected. So, starting a year ago, the FinCom and in Pepperell, as well as Ashby and uh, um, Townsend. Townsend, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we met with school administrators, um, you know, Brad Morgan, particularly. And it was was that your idea to start doing that? Because that was well, really good. Yeah, if you recall, yeah. the town meeting a year and a half ago yeah. was one of the things that, because two years ago, the FinCom actually voted against, if you recall that meeting, um, yep. May of 2019, we voted against the school budget yeah. simply because we, were, we got it late. It was proposing over, I think, a 5% increase. Yeah. And we just did not have the funding. That was the same year we had to ask for the override, the two and a half percent override. Yep. Mm -hmm. But at that town meeting, you know, I made a commitment that, to work with the schools um, to make sure that we were able to get together and have the budget agreed to long before. Yeah, it was, yep, before it was voted on. Yeah. And, and 
and yeah. therefore that good. process worked. Yeah, you know? it's really been good. It did yeah. work very well. Yeah, it was a great yeah. idea. And mm -hmm. it, it was something that, you know, it, it now enables us all to better manage the flight against mm -hmm. So it gives more predictability as yeah. well, because with it being such a large part of our budget, if they come in much higher than what we were expecting, mm -hmm. um, it's always a problem, because yeah. now at the last minute we're thinking, we either got to do override or we got to do cuts, cuts in other areas, yeah. which neither of those two are desirable. Yeah. So I think we got to a better result, a better process by yeah. meeting regularly. And Brad yeah. and his team has really worked together with yeah. us and, yeah. and very, very proud of that. Yeah. Um, I'll go back to two other points I made. Yeah. At that town meeting uh, two years ago, uh, coming up on two years ago, it's amazing. I can't yeah. believe I've that's blown. But one of the things I said was, I'm committed to education. You know, my vote against that budget two years ago wasn't about mm -hmm. not wanting to fund schools. No. Absolutely not the case. Mm -hmm. In my personal experience, but you, you also need to be responsible to the extent that we just can't be increasing taxes right. Right. and spending mm -hmm. more. We need to work together. Right. So my perspective has always been, and I, as I said two years ago in that town meeting, we're going to work together to ensure that we're getting the best possible education for for the for the, uh, the students that are coming out of this town. Good education increases property values, which increases tax revenues, which mm -hmm. increases the it's right. it's a circular process that mm -hmm. builds on itself. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be very diligent to ensure that we continue to maintain excellent and best in class education yeah. systems yeah. to our building. We may not be able to do it in one year or overnight, but if you're committed to be to, to, to continue to monitor and to ensure that we're slowly moving ahead, mm -hmm. we'll get to a point where you know the North Middlesex Regional High School is one of the best in, in the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I support that initiative. Yeah, uh, the nice second the second point I made two years ago was improving communication with the town residents regarding our district. We got a little bit delayed doing it. I still am not happy with the amount of information we're giving on a regular basis. It's mm -hmm. something I am working with Bill, uh, the town accountant, on improving that. Um, Bill has himself and a part-time person, yeah. you know, helping, and he's got a lot of work to do with the regular processes. But I am going to be working with him more closely to get more more contemporaneous information available to the town. I want a website newsletter set up. Mm -hmm. So that everyone shows, here's the budget you approved last year. Yeah. Here's where we are currently. Uh, here's the red light areas where we want to make sure, you know, here's yellow light, here's green light, and kind of show us how we're managing the whole process yeah, and where we are in space. That's important mm -hmm. simply because a once a year connection with the town budget at town meeting yeah. is not enough. No, um, it isn't. Townsfolk will be more reactive during that meeting to understanding yeah. why increases are happening. Yeah. They're going to be more reactive and not as, you know, not as thorough in the analysis. Mm -hmm. That one meeting is not going no, to be no. sufficient. No. So it's very important that this over the next year, 2020 is kind of, you know, it, 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 just, it just caused challenges in every aspect mm -hmm. of our life, professional, mm -hmm. you know, civic or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be refocusing our efforts on that. Yeah, that's so, actually a good idea. Very good. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And, and I think that's, that will, again, it's kind of a circular process to, to the extent that as more and more people get more and more aware, more and more people get more connected, they talk more mm -hmm. in a positive sense mm -hmm. about, you asked about the process. Uh -huh. So I, I told you about the pragmatic, the actual mechanical process here. But what we should really consider is the analysis that goes behind it. As a member of the FinCom, I'm not elected. This is an appointed position. It's a voluntary position. Mm -hmm. And my role is to ensure that the residents, the citizens of this town, understand the financial implications of the decisions that we need to make. Yeah. OK? The pot plant, or sorry, the marijuana store, the second store, uh, is a great example. Because I don't know if everyone did understand how having that second facility, that second establishment, would have created extra ta cash revenue in the future for us, right? Yeah. 
So that's part of my role. I'm not on that committee to do anything except analyze the facts. Yeah. I don't espouse my own personal political views. Mm -hmm. I'm a registered Republican. One of the first things I did when I became a citizen was register, okay? But that's not my role on this finance committee. My role is to take input from the community, understand what the community at large, mm -hmm. which direction they want to go, and then provide the best financial analysis, communicate back to the community yeah. about the financial outcomes of that. So, Tying it back to what we were just talking about a couple minutes ago, it's challenging for us to make what we believe are broader community-based decisions when we're only hearing the voice of a very small number of people. And the same ones there a lot are, of times. Are the, the there have been people. simply 178, <clears throat> there were 178 people that, that voted mm -hmm. last week. We have a much larger voting registered yeah. voting base. Yeah, we do. So, to simplify this message, it's not just about passing on a specific issue or acting on a specific issue. It's communicating to our governing bodies, the select board, the various committees, and the people that work on those committees about what the town really wants. Mm -hmm. Okay. The message last week was we didn't get enough people to vote on it, but. It, it showed that the majority of people, a simple majority, more than that, yeah. actually wanted that second establishment. Mm -hmm. But again, going back to my earlier comments, I'm not complaining about the process. We required more than two-thirds votes yeah. to approve it, and we didn't meet that. We were short by, I believe it was four or five votes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But at least I now know that at least the, the residents of this town, nearly two-thirds, mm -hmm. uh, supported a second marijuana station. Yeah. That becomes a factor now in my decisions going forward. Mm -hmm. When I analyze the financial impacts of decisions and how I communicate to the town. Yeah. So please, the questions that we should talk about is, you know, where are we going? Where right. are we going, right? right. Yeah. Can we? Sure. Because what you said just leads into my other question mm -hmm. and the voting. But the budget actually isn't the finance committee, it's the people coming to town Absolutely. meeting voting on. You just recommend. Exactly. You make the best recommendations for the town. Exactly. And again, it's the people who decide. So you did kind of lead me into the next question. Mm -hmm. You review the budget, and you're only coming to town meeting with recommendations. Exactly right. That work best for the town. Mm -hmm. So they have to really register and be there and take yeah. part. Exactly right. Yep, yep. Exactly. So let's go into what you said. How do we get there? What is? So when we take a look at the next five, 10 years, and again, when you're, when you're, when you're forecasting, everything is just based on mm. it, the information you have available to you right now and some rational assumptions that you need to make. So as we look to the next five, 10 years, assuming mm. that we are able to increase um, to the two and a half percent, yeah. and an estimate of a certain amount of growth in the town, either increase in property values or additional residential homes being built yeah. and added to. You know, we're still seeing about a three, the three and a half percent growth in revenue. Mm -hmm. That's so the two and a half plus, plus one and a half growth. of new growth. Exactly. Right. Now I'm just talking in terms of this is the property taxes, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that exclusion and yeah, that numbers no. here, okay? But that is the base. That is the yeah. predominant portion mm -hmm. of our revenue is coming from property taxes. Yeah. Um, approximately, I believe I've got the exact numbers here, but when you look at last year, it's, uh, you know, it's approximately, uh, you know, 23.7 million of our 31 million mm -hmm. is yeah. property taxes, okay? And what was the other? Seven million or so. What, where did that money go? Uh, well, there's debt exclusion, okay. know, which is really when you think about it, it's a revenue, but it's also immediately offset by the fact yeah. that you have those debt payments to make. So, okay. primarily the the, the, um, the debt exclusion. There are some local receipts as well, about mm -hmm. two or three million, yeah. and um, then some transfers from the enterprise funds. Okay. So, and again, those numbers aren't huge from the transfers, no. but we okay. do share services, so there's yeah. some okay. interfund transfers there. 
But the predominant revenue source is property taxes. So commercial and residential. Right. So looking for the next five or ten years, just based on the numbers we're looking at here, you can assume that, assuming no other cost okay. increased more than mm -hmm. that two and a half or three percent, we should be fine. Okay. But I'll, bear in mind that is that is level service. Mm -hmm. That's what That's, they mean when they say level funding. Exactly. It means okay. no increase in the yeah. police, no increase in EMTs, uh, no increase in our yeah. capital fund bill, nothing. It basically covers the existing operating mm -hmm. expenses. Mm -hmm. So to put it in a personal perspective, this is the entire amount of your paycheck yeah. having to go to pay bills every month. Nothing mm -hmm. is being saved, nothing mm -hmm. is being invested, nothing. nothing is growing. There's no project going on, nothing. Right. So uh, we do need to consider other sources of growth. Mm -hmm. um, there's many different camps here, right? There's many yeah. different perspectives. Again, another reason why the whole community's voice should be heard. Mm -hmm. So when you consider what the primary sources of revenue are on property, your first instinct is how are we going to grow the number of homes? Mm -hmm. How are we going to increase that base? Yeah. So one viewpoint is, well, we've got some area around here. Let's you know encourage more development, encourage more housing, bring more people in. You're going to increase the base. Uh, some would argue that that would lead to an increase in service costs, but I think generally the studies would show that, that it, it's not a dollar for dollar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, you will increase the net amount over time. There's another um, perspective that way, but we, we want to be a rural community. Mm -hmm. I, I like the feel of this community. Mm -hmm. So that's, if we go that route, then we realize then we really need to rely on other sources of revenue because the property tax base just won't grow to the mm -hmm. extent that we need. Um, so here's where things like a second marijuana establishment would have really helped, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? Uh, because um, it wouldn't cover, like, and, and, and make us rich, don't get me wrong, oh. but it does take the pressure off the budget every year. Yeah. Because right now, based on what we're forecasting, it's, it's razor thin. Mm -hmm. We're not growing. The, right now, as we, and anyone that's participated and listened to the FinCom meetings and, and whatnot that we've had over the budget, our revenues are short of our expenses by $90,000. Even after mm -hmm. all the tweaking and all the changes we've made, we're sitting at $90,000. And that's giving none of the department heads any of their wish list. Mm -hmm. right. uh, maybe some small amount, I'll, I'll, I'll retract that. <laughs> But nothing major. Like we're not adding, please. We're not adding no. cars. We're not adding EMT. We're not adding firemen, right? No. We're not, um, and that's with the school budget coming in uh, as lean as they can possibly get. It, you know. But that, that. Sorry, getting back to what I was Sorry. saying. If 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 you espouse the view that we want to keep it rural mm -hmm. and green spaces available and more and more farmland, um, then we got to look at alternative sources. And unfortunately, those alternative sources just don't add to the revenue base like we should. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't consider them. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the second marijuana store would definitely have added yeah. mm -hmm. uh, some revenue. But the question is, if we got to get to a point where we're trying to reserve the green spaces and develop and, and, and control development and rely on more commercial, the question is, what kind of commercial? commercial yeah. Because there seems last weekend's vote, there were a lot of people very concerned about traffic, about the number of people coming to town. So when you think about increasing commerce as an offset to increase revenue or, or to increase our revenue base, you need, you need to, traffic, you, you need, you're going to have traffic. You're going to have more people coming to the town. Yeah. Um, and that was clear last week mm -hmm. that a lot of people felt that we should limit that. So, to answer your question, the path forward is complex. Yeah. It's still very foggy, to be honest with you. We will need to balance um, growth, I believe. If we're not willing to increase or do overrides, which is always an option, not yeah. one we want to pursue, but if we're not willing or we want to restrict the number of overrides, because we do need to be considerate, 
of other people in our community with limited incomes, the elderly, seniors, and those that don't have, you know, the extra funds that they live, yeah. um, you know, sensitive to extra income or extra spending like taxes. We don't want to be raising no. their costs to accommodate other spending. So this all again ties back to our earlier comments about understanding the voice of the community. We need people to be more about not only register to vote, I'm sorry to bring that up again. No, no, it's true. But be more active. Yeah. I, I've been doing this for two years, and unless someone has a very specific concern about an issue that we're going to discuss, I'll be honest with you, the community is not getting involved. We will need to consider all of these options in the future. Overrides, yeah. cuts, alternatives to either growing and eliminating green space, allowing better development, yeah. or keeping our green space and considering more um, alternative options like mm -hmm. dealing with alternative fuel sources, or dealing mm -hmm. with solar farms, uh, wind farms, yeah. or a combination of all those things. 